I would like to talk about my health history. Um, about two years ago, my husband and I decided to go for genetic counseling uh, because I um, am albino. And in case you don't know what albinism is, um, it's a genetic disorder where there's no pigment in the skin, so you have very pale skin. And um, that's one of the characteristics. Another is no pigment in the eyes and legal blindness. Um, although I am considered legally blind, I can see very well and I can function on a daily basis without, without too much assistance. Um, I use magnifiers to read. One of the reasons we went to genetic counseling was because I wanted to determine whether our children would have albinism. I want to give my child the very best start right from the very beginning. Um, and I thought that knowing the chances might help me make my decision about childbearing. Um, while we were at genetic counseling, uh, we discovered that not only am I albino, but um, I have uh, another characteristic of albinism, which is a very rare uh, genetic disorder. Um, it's called Hermansky-Pudlock syndrome. The characteristics of Hermansky-Pudlock are, of course, the albinism, which is what I described. and. Um, you don't necessarily have to have no pigment like I do because I do have pigment in the hair. There are some people who are black and have dark skin as well as Puerto Ricans who have dark skin, dark hair and have the ocular albinism and have the characteristics of, uh, of Hermansky-Pudlock syndrome which in short is HPS. So I'll most likely refer to it as HPS. And the health factors for HPS are um, bleeding disorders, which your blood doesn't clot. Someone with Hermansky-Pudlock bruises very easily because their blood doesn't clot as easily. Um, someone with HPS um, could also have a lot of nosebleeds because, again, because the blood doesn't clot as well. That is a very easy health issue that you can take care of because you can just get platelet replacements if you're ever in an emergency. Other health issues are gastro issues as well as lung issues. And um, one of the common factors that they're finding in HPS1 patients, there are different variations of HPS, is that the lung issues tend to come about at between age 30 and 50. And most people with HPS1 develop pulmonary fibrosis. And the reason I'm talking about HPS1 is because that's the particular gene that I have. Um, I'm from Puerto Rican descent. The founder's effect of HPS1 is from the northwest of Puerto Rican area. And uh, that's where I'm from. And that's why it was so easy for the genetic counselors to determine what type of albinism I have. Um, we did the blood work right away. And when I did find out that I have HPS1, um, it was through, not only through the blood work, but also through a genetic swab in the mouth where they actually looked at the gene. So um, I've been educating myself on this rare disorder and um, one of the things that I learned was that because my husband doesn't have any of the um, background traits of where the gene has migrated to or from, um, our chances of having children with albinism, let alone HPS, are pretty rare. We could get him tested, but you can't, it's not really easy to test someone who doesn't already have the gene because these kind of genes can just mutate on their own. So that's one of my health factors and um, I just wanted to let everybody know because I'll probably refer to it, you know, in any of my discussions about the HPS. Um, I don't have any bleeding issues. I don't have any lung issues. I don't have any gastro issues. I don't have any of the, any of the symptoms. And that's why I was skeptical when the doctor says, oh, you're Puerto Rican and you're albino. You're from this area. Um, why don't we just test you for HPS, Hermansky-Pudlock syndrome? And I said, well, one of my really good friends has it and I don't have any of the characteristics, you know, any of the symptoms. Uh, so I don't think that's it. <laughs> well, they're the doctors and I'm the patient. I can tell them that I don't think I have it, but that's why they get paid the big bucks to make the determination. Um, so it just turned out that I do, and I wasn't I wasn't distraught, you know. Although it is is it is life changing knowing 
you know, that you have a genetic disorder. It is. Because then you, then you kind of wonder, oh, what could be, what could happen, how, now I know how I will pass, if that's how I do pass. Um, but you never really know. You never really know how you're going to pass. So don't worry about that. Um, but in regards to the lung issues, I wanted to discuss one important major factor. HPF has a direct correlation with pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis is a very serious lung disease that happens. It, there's no determining how the cells mutate in the lungs. And because the scientists haven't determined how the cells mutate in the lungs to create the pulmonary fibrosis, there really is no cure yet. But there are drug trials going on right now at the NIH, which is uh, something that I've contributed um, my lung tissue to. I did a lung lavage um, about a year and a half ago, and that's one of the ways that I, I decided that I was going to help to try and find a cure. Um, others, other ways are just volunteering my time to the, to the cause. So, um, I'm, you know, of course I think about it, but I'm not going to let that stop my life, and I am going to um, <laughs> try and live a full life and have my beautiful little baby with my husband and raise this little girl, and we're really happy about her. And uh, we hope that with all of our planning and all of our preparation for trying to, you know, give her the best start genetic-wise, we hope that everything else works out perfectly and she's born healthy and beautiful.